Welcome back to my channel. I finally got a hold of a uh, preview of the uh, production model of the Bravo throttle quadrant, which I'd like to review today. Now there's already plenty of uh, detailed reviews, uh, including unboxing and uh, setup and those other more uh, nuanced uh, reviews out there. So what I like to do is, uh, as a pilot with many decades of experience, I just like to, to fly this uh, quadrant with uh, Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane with a few airplanes and give you my impressions and make final recommendations. I'm especially eager to try the Boeing 737 style handles since I have uh, so much time uh, in that aircraft in real life. So let's take a quick look 50, at the uh, 40, Bravo throttle 30, quadrant and see if it offers bang for 10. the buck. The installation bracket is identical to the uh, Alpha yoke. It just clamps under the table and there's also a suction option. Once it's on there, just a matter of tightening the, uh, the handles and it's uh, ready to install. Just like the Alpha, the bottom, bottom of the uh, Bravo has a socket that mounts onto the uh, horn that's on the mounting plate. And once you slide it forward, it's just a matter of tightening a couple uh, screws on the back to make it secure. And once it's on there, it's quite secure. The actual throttles hang down slightly below the level of the uh, table that it could be attached on. And although it probably would work fine uh, level with the uh, Alpha yoke, and I believe it's designed that way, I found it better myself to just lower it slightly. So I lowered the pedestal a bit to make it a little bit lower uh, than the Alpha. Besides the gear and flaps, there are some features you don't expect to find on a throttle quadrant. There's the autopilot controls that allow you to uh, select a... Uh, a setting and then uh, there's a knob to uh, control that on the other end of these buttons. The buttons control the uh, autopilot functions and then this knob allows you to raise and decrease the uh, values of whatever you've selected. Also there's a uh, autopilot and there's a, some switches there that can be assigned for any purpose. They're not, they have no specific function. Uh, but the drivers aren't available yet. Of course you see there's also gear lights in uh, an enunciator panel. The screw pattern on top is exactly the same as the uh, yoke for the Alpha. One of the coolest features of the uh, Bravo is the uh, removable handles. They have handles of different styles. They have a uh, speed brake handle that can be mounted. There's a total of six axes, as you can see, and you can see there's a little metal contacts as so some of these can actually uh, control the buttons and the contacts are made when you just snap them on these little rubber seals pull out uh, they're easy to replace they're actually pretty sturdy uh, i didn't know what they would be like but i think they're good you can see the second axis has three electrical contacts and uh, depending on what handle you put on in this case there's a go around switch and a reverser uh, handle and, and those contacts are made with those three connections Assume one ground and then two uh, hot contacts and a reverser thrust. So there's uh, four of those handles. So you can go up to four uh, throttles and you can re rearrange these uh, in various ways, uh, however you like. Uh, you can put the, uh, you can skip a slot or, or whatever. Also reversing uh, the number there to make it match if you're using, if you want the throttles op opposing. But anyway, uh, there's also a uh, flap handle you can put on. So you can arrange these as you like them. Uh, if you're going to put four on, you can start right there and work your way across. So let's start off with a look at the uh, CJ4 in uh, Flight Sim 2020. Set up a speed brake handle. Of course, the trim. And I find the trim to be a little bit loose. I'd like a little more friction or some way to adjust that. The gear handle feels real good. The uh, throttles, I love the fact that there's a throttle on the far side. There's a tension adjustment. You can make these throttles nice and firm or soft, whatever you want. Also a uh, toga or go around button and uh, the flaps. Now you can use the flap handle on the uh, panel there for one notch down, one notch up, but you can also use an axis here to set the flaps. 
and I have here there's three positions so I just center it to about the middle and it seems to work fine it really would be nice though if there was some way there could be some detents on the uh, throttles now we're going to depart here at LAX uh, in the CJ4 in the FS2020 and I'm uh, I'm really impressed with the with the uh, durability of this for plastic. It's uh, obviously it's plastic. It's not metal. I have a uh, Virtual Fly TQ6, and I'm not going to tell you that it's any place close to that durable. However, uh, compared to the Satex stuff that I've had and CH stuff, uh, this is uh, far superior. Has a really nice finish, and uh, really a lot of versatility. I mean, uh, now I can't wait to get the uh, the enunciator panel and uh, all the uh, other functions for the autopilot working to see how those work but if they come any place close to uh, working the way they're supposed to uh, this is going to be an awesome awesome addition to anybody's sim one thing uh, that I've not extremely excited about is the I find the the detent at the bottom of the throttle all the axes to be just a little weak it's hard to tell when you reach the detent because it, there's just not much resistance And positive rate, gear up. So all in all, this is uh, uh, something that I'm uh, really pleased with so far, and uh, it's meeting my expectations. I think for the price, you really couldn't get much more. When you couple this with the Alpha, you've got most of everything you need for a a basic flight sim setup uh, that you can uh, use all manual controls and not have to be using your mouse and keyboard much and uh, that certainly adds to realism so now we're going to switch to the uh, Baron uh, flying uh, we're going to shut an engine down here pull the mixture down and uh, power up and verify uh, left engine dead foot dead engine and to start a turn back towards the LAX and we'll pull the uh, bad throttle back to confirm it and that worked and we'll feather that engine pull it back to feather and uh, swing around around and uh, get landing clearance at LAX yeah, this, uh, this is a very nice throttle quadrant. I find the handles uh, for the general aviation to feel quite uh, normally sized. Uh, uh, the, they feel good in the hands, and uh, I, I assume there'll be other, other people building, uh, building handles. One of the real advantages uh, of this kit is it comes with a really nice case to store the handles you're not using, and that's always an issue. Uh, it's easy to lose these little parts, and it's a magnetically closed box. It's solid. It looks like something you might get from an uh, Apple computer or something like that. You know, really a uh, really quality box. I know that sounds silly, but uh, uh, that's uh, the kind of attention to detail they put into it, and I'm uh, very impressed. Uh, throttle is uh, slightly smaller than uh, than what I would expect in real life, but but certainly manageable. And uh, as we switch to the uh, to the Boeing here at the end, I'll show you, uh, uh, I actually measured it to get this scale uh, between the real. Really anxious to see the drivers uh, in uh, for the uh, autopilot controls and wonder if there'll be some flexibility so that uh, either custom uh, data refs or different variables for a flight sim can be put in there so that it has some flexibility. Uh, but uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Even some special add-on airplanes, even uh, even the gear gear indications use uh, non-standard numbers here. I'm pulling this uh, throttle back and having to adjust the rudder. You can sure tell X-plane is uh, not quite uh, the same graphical quality. But X-Plane sure does have a great flight model still, uh, superior to what FS2020 has so far. 
Now let's uh, take a look at the 737. I'm going to explain on the Zebo 737, and we're turning about a eight mile finals for uh, LAX landing to the uh, west. You can see we have uh, flaps at uh, 15 with the gear down. And flying just uh, for the experience. We're about 195 knots. Waiting for that glide path. Put some more flaps down. A little early on the gear, but uh, wasn't sure how far out I was till I turned final. I miss my multiple monitors. Uh, don't have that set up right now. And uh, I'm not flying VR much now. Waiting for my HP. Uh, reverbed G2 headset to come and then I'm going to get that set up be back in VR one of the problems with the flaps you can see there's no detents in the, in the 737 there's gates uh, I'll show you a picture here of what they look like the gates have uh, they're at 15 and 1 and those are the go around now when you want to move the flaps back uh, down you have to you can pull them up and go over all the open gates and when you hit that one of those two you have to let the thing down and then bring it back up kind of go under the hump the reason they have that is because go around a two engine go around you go to flaps 15 it's it'll, it's impossible to, to overshoot the flaps to reduce the flaps too far too quick the same thing with a single engine go around you'd be at flaps uh, 15 and when 1, you go up to flaps one it would automatically stop you from inset. pulling the flaps up all the way uh, but I'm going to see if there's some way to 3d print something uh, that could be mounted, uh, maybe even a new handle, uh, something that would have some uh, removable gates. It'd be nice to have, uh, you know, approach flaps and landing flaps. I do like using a handle if it's available. It's more realistic, but uh, than using just the up-down landing checklist. Start switch is continuous. Speed brake, arm, green light, landing gear, verify down three green flaps, 30 green light detent and the landing checklist is complete. Five hundred. So as we fly in here, uh, I, I'll give you my final uh, appraisal. I, I, I think uh, I like mostly, the things I like most about this throttle is the friction adjustment. Three hundred. That it's extremely versatile. I think the autopilot's going to be great. I like the build quality. I think it looks 200. sturdy, especially for something made out of plastic. Um, I think it gives a great value for the price, and uh, I love the storage 100. boxes for the uh, little handles, the extra handles. And I'm looking forward to 50, see what other people 40, develop. Thirty things I don't like. I'd like 10. to see some way to have some detents on the flaps, but that's asking a lot. Uh, the reverse modulation. Uh, when I pull up these reverse handles, they go into full reverse. Uh, they go into full reverse, and there's no modulation of the reverse. It's either full up or full down. I'd like the trim to have a little bit of resistance, as I said before. But all in all, I think I'm pretty pleased with this. So I'll give them my final verdict here in just a moment. As you probably could figure out, I'm a very uh, strong supporter of the honeycomb yoke after giving it a try. Uh, anxious to see the software before I give it the uh, double thumbs up. But uh, all in all, very pleased with everything about it. Uh, those minor things that I said are really asking a lot, especially when you consider I came from a Satec yoke. I love my uh, Virtual Fly TQ6 but it costs uh, approaching $900. And uh, this is a very good value for what you get. And like I said, for someone who's getting starting in, started in flight simulation uh, and wants to go to the next level, uh, this is a great, uh, great throttle quadrant to use, especially if you couple it with the, uh, with the uh, Alpha. As the yoke, it gives you great, uh, uh, you know, a lot of what you need to have a very realistic simulator without spending money.
may wonder why I didn't show the panel. I, I didn't include that in my video, but I used the uh, bracket from uh, Stay Level Avionics uh, in the uh, the monitor mounted on there with an instrument panel. I'll be showing that later. I have done the instruments for the uh, the uh, Zebo, and uh, I can show that again. And uh, I'm going to try mounting a another. 15.6 inch monitor on top of the throttle and see uh, what that looks like and if it works well I'll try to do a video on that. Please like, subscribe and uh, comment, share with your friends. Appreciate your support. See you on the next video. Thanks.